Hello, Kind Avenue. Thank you for your response. It was a rapid uh, response from you. Um, I was actually summarizing the work of Dr. Craig Keener, a New Testament scholar on the subject of miracles. And I don't know if you can refute my discussion of it because I'm simply summarizing his uh, presentation, which was just given at the Evangelical Philosophical Society's conference in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, but you're certainly welcome to question his um, some of his arguments. He, as I um, alluded to or, or perhaps explicitly stated in my other video, Keener on Miracles, he certainly added the caveat that he did not necessarily believe in all of the uh, claims that were given. Um, Keener's primary point was that Hume's argument was invalid. It was unsound, uh, perhaps because it was invalid. Hume was trying to derive a generalization about all previous reports or eyewitness testimony of miracles based on the lack of said reports in the present, in his present day. And Hume was racist because he relegated the reports of his present day to what he called barbarous peoples, peoples that he thought were uneducated and illiterate and therefore could not properly understand their environment or give an accurate eyewitness testimony of an event, even if that event happens to be a major event, like a healing of an, a bodily injury. So here I think you fail in your so-called refutation to deal with the central issue. The central issue has to do with whether we can use pro, um, the lack of or maybe the flaws in contemporary eyewitness reports on miracles to try to discredit previous miracles such as those reported in the New Testament of the Christian Bible. That's really what's at stake. Um, I think your response is perhaps eliciting a little bit more clarification from me on this point, but I just want to make that clear that that's what Dr. Keener was addressing. Now, whether or not the reports themselves are legitimate, that's an entirely different issue. Okay, let's examine uh, what you are actually arguing in your so-called refutation. You'd say, um, you refer to an a priori argument. Well, what you provide is not a priori. I would recommend just picking up a dictionary of philosophy and just looking at the difference between a posteriori and a priori. A priori reasoned is a um, manner by which thoughts themselves or the coherency of thoughts or whether thoughts are logically entailed by one another, uh, that sort of reasoning is involved. A posteriori, on the other hand, has to do with um, items in our sensory environment um, <clears throat> that could provide justification or perhaps um, a lack of justification for a particular position that one might or might not adopt. So I think you may be just confused on that point. Um, I would recommend checking that out. There's some really good um, literature on that. Um, I have a couple of dictionaries of philosophy. I've got uh, dictionaries of philosophy. I've got Peter Angelis's. Um, he's actually an atheist. I have his dictionary of philosophy. I've got Anthony Flew's. Um, it's actually, actually, it's borrowed from the library. I have that dictionary of philosophy. Great resource, though. Um, he, as you know, he later in life uh, converted, or he at least, at least became a deist, if not a theist. Um, but at any rate, you'll find some good material out there on that. Um, what you're talking about when you refer to a psychosomatic condition, that is definitely not an a priori argument. I can assure you of that much. That's an, that would be an a posteriori or a type of reasoning from experience uh, to a broader conclusion.
Okay, enough said about that. I don't want to beat a dead horse there. Um, you referred at one minute and about one minute and 40 seconds in your video, you talk about people um, turning to healers instead of medical technicians. And if I understood you correctly, if faith healing was more common, um, people would turn to them rather than um, medical technicians. Well, as a matter of fact, a lot of these reports of miracles and faith healings um, that have occurred, or at least the reports that are going on about contemporary faith healings, are because someone's already consulted a medical physician and there's nothing, there's nothing that they can offer. They are simply at wit's end. Um, and, and so clearly um, something is being provided by the faith healer that isn't, that is not by the medical practitioner. Um, I, I don't know, if maybe there's a better way to say it than I'm saying it, but I, I, that's the simplest way that I could respond to that. At, at about 2 minutes and 20 seconds, you have a claim that no amputees have been healed and that this fact discredits faith healing in general. Well, no, it does not without further argument from you. Uh, it, um, as a matter of fact, um, there are several different types of, of healings that have been reported. Again, there, that doesn't make them all legitimate. Um, not all of them are, are in churches, and not all are in churches that even believe in spiritual or faith healing. So I, I think that addresses your point. Um, but if you want to make an argument that because no amputees have been healed in your field of experience, that faith healing in general cannot occur, can't, or it cannot be divine or supernatural, you would need to provide said argument. Okay, uh, a little bit later, two minutes, 30 seconds. Um, it's superstitious nonsense in your view because of no evidence. Well, there is evidence. It's eyewitness testimony. Now, you may reject the evidence of eyewitness testimony. But if you're going to reject a particular claim, Dr. Keener's point is that you would need to use the ordinary means of empirical verification to do so. Um, at 2 minutes uh, and 47 seconds, yes, they have been uh, reviewed in, in um, peer-reviewed journals. Uh, 3 minutes, non-Christians uh, would discuss this if it were really happening. Well, non-Christians um, have discussed it, and um, there have been reports. Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of them are from people that haven't believed, and, and um, as a matter of fact, faith healing, um, as reported at least, goes hand-in-hand -hand with evangelism. Um, well, let's see here. Um, how do I know that you're not engaging in, okay, confirmation bias? I guess at, at f about 4 minutes and 30 seconds, you talk about... Um, people who become deceased, um, they're declared medically dead, and they come back to life. Now, let me, let me propose a test here, and I, I think this will help out our discussion on this. I think this will be amicable in nature. If we have a condition present, such as a pastor praying for someone, and then there is someone who was lifeless who comes to life, who is lifeless after they've a certain period of time or they've been declared dead, would you agree that the pastoral prayer was um, in necessary or involved in that process? Um, I guess at this point I'm not talking about whether or not we can prove it's divine, but whether the presence of the pastoral prayer was relevant for the resurrection from the dead. Um, I guess you would perhaps you. I think maybe you sh you have a little burden of proof here. I, I don't I don't mean to sound testy, but I, I think maybe you're shirking here a little bit. Why don't you provide what you think is a medical definition of death so that we could use that and, and test it out? Let's put it to the test and let's see cases where after a certain number of hours, after someone has been deceased and they come back to life after being prayed for, um, let's see if that still works given your um, your initial conditions that you would like to set out. But generally speaking, a counterfactual, which I think would be helpful in this case, a counterfactual would be um, if we uh, have not had present X, Y, and Z, um, 
A would not have led to B. So if B happens and it's based on A, but there are other background conditions, X, Y, and Z, um, that when they're removed, B does not follow upon A. So I guess at this point, if we if we have uh, if we have an absence of pastoral prayer, but someone is still uh, being raised for the dead or comes back spontaneously to life, um, let's examine that. Let's examine that evidence and see uh, where it leads. Um, Okay, I've dragged on pretty long here, and there's actually a few more points I want to respond to. I think I'm going to have to do so in a, a future video. Okay, thanks a lot, and have a good evening, Kind Avenue.